Hello, my name is Mark Baer. I'm your host of Muse. We're shooting live in the Museum of Monterey. If you see people behind us walking around, it's because we are open. My guest this segment, Paulette Lynch, and she is from the Arts Council of Monterey County. You are the head of this. I'm the executive director. Exec executive director. Okay, before we get too much into the Arts Council and Arts are the Answer, um, just briefly let people know a little bit about yourself. How did, how did you end up here? Uh, the long story is that I've been interested in singing and playing guitar since I was a little kid. And I ended up um, coming to Monterey, though, through the Monterey Institute of International Studies. And at some point, we really decided that I wasn't going to be a foreign diplomat. And I worked in the nonprofit sector. Eventually, I founded First Night Monterey. And after 10 years, I uh, got the opportunity to apply to be the executive director of the Arts Council. It was called the Cultural Council at that time. And at that point, I, I couldn't wait. It just seemed like my dream job. Uh, so that's how eventually it all came together. So you, you've been here involved culturally for a long time. Yes. I know that when I first came to uh, this area, you were one of the first people that people said to, to get a hold of in terms of arts and culture here. So um, this last week with uh, Kira Corser, we had a fabulous event here, uh, Sea Change Act, and we had a, a, a panel discussion of which you were uh, uh, played a large role in. And I saw, again, how interesting it is when you bring the scientific community and the arts community together. And one of the things that we've been dedicated to doing here at the Museum of Monterey is putting those two pieces together. And uh, I guess first let's talk about what Arts of the Answer means, and then I want to go talk about some of the training that you were talking about uh, to really make social change. So let, let's first, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about Arts of the Answer. When I first came to the, to the Arts Council in 2004, things were in a really dire state. And I had to do a lot of digging to prove that the arts were really worth supporting, particularly with a public dollar at that point. And so it was my opportunity to really dig through all of our files. We had been in business for 20 years already at that point, And to look around the country, I looked everywhere. Um, to see what was the value of, of the arts. And what I found over and over and over in schools, in community settings, whether it was traditional arts or dance, music, no matter what the setting, no matter what the discipline, I could keep seeing that the arts were the answer. So um, that was, that's been my working theory my, and, our, and our motto and our findings, that instead of being something extra, instead of being something for people who like that sort of thing, we keep finding, and particularly the more um, you look at brain research, really contemporary brain research, you can see that the arts are the answer to both meeting our greatest challenges and to achieving our greatest potential. And, I, and by our, I really don't just mean Monterey County, I just mean people. So one of the things that we talked about uh, on Sunday was uh, the idea of steam, of steam instead of STEM. Uh -huh. So again, in the educational system, so that they put the arts into the big picture, which I, which I think is uh, you are a champion of. Yes. And uh, l let's, um, again, for what are the, some of the challenges that you're dealing with in, in terms of this? And what, how is the community responding to arts is the answer? In terms of the arts of the answer, you don't always hear people use the terms, but one of the greatest things uh, that happened for me last year was uh, I was given an award as, um, uh, for my impact on, on Monterey County and by the status on the commission of women, the commissions rather on the status of women in Monterey County, and they were really concerned about what's happening for um, women, children, and families. And so um, Supervisor Salinas was one of the speakers. And as he was concluding his remarks, he said, "And Paulette's right. The arts are the answer." So that was that's when that I, I knew. Yes. I, it's really yeah. 
it's really starting to stick and my board members now will use the, the term uh, much more often and, and many of the people that are our partners, our grantees and allies will use the term as they understand it and probably everybody even understands it a little differently. For me, what it means is that the, the arts are a catalyst for everything that we want to achieve, everything from juvenile justice and getting kids to go on the right path, from little kids to, uh, to economic development, appealing to people to come and set up their businesses here, grow their businesses here. A vibrant economy depends on a strong arts and cultural uh, component within the community. Also, in, if you look in terms of just um, living, it, uh, just an individual person, from the time that a little child is learning to read, the arts are the answer there. To the development of, of our aging brains, and now they're looking at neuroplasticity, the arts are the answer there. If you look at how um, the, there are innovations in dealing with traumatic brain injuries, a lot of our vets are coming back with, with really troubling um, difficulties uh, from concussions, and, and maybe this would work for, for the uh, sports figures who are also having difficulties. What they're finding is that music particularly uh, covers so much of the geography of the brain that when someone's engaged in music, the unaffected part compensates for the injured part and the, um, uh, the injured part starts to heal more quickly. So we know in so many different ways that the arts are the answer. We can keep seeing it um, time after time uh, in Monterey County when you see groups like the Youth Arts Collective who are taking kids who may not feel like they fit in exactly, their, their confidence might be low when they start. Just a year later, two years later, these are kids who have found their voice, they found their calling, they know what they want to do, and, and they really have lots of skills now. Uh, we have a great program at the Probation Department uh, Youth Center where we're taking kids who are incarcerated for a year and helping them to get a handle on their emotions and uh, start to see themselves also as skilled, as talented, as able, uh, able to choose well, to choose better. So I am finding that, um, that the concept of the arts of the answer is resonating more and more in many different places. Look at our own hospital that both CHOMP and Tividad are using the arts as a way to, to have both a vibrancy and also a calming effect. And they're finding too, it's not, they start the program, they start to have all these beautiful exhibitions um, as a way to help patients. But what they're finding is that the arts are the answer to helping visitors feel more welcome and more comfortable in a, what can be a really challenging environment. Everybody's under extraordinary stress. But what's even more amazing is to hear the staff comments, surgeons, do other doctors who are saying, uh, this helps me. From time to time, I just go to a quiet space and I just breathe in and I feel so much better. And uh, it's, there's, there's both a calming effect and a vibrancy effect and that's a double um, advantage that um, you can see in every discipline and in many different ways of expression, traditional, contemporary, just anything. Let's talk about just some personal experiences that you've had in, in the art field, some of, the, some of the projects that you've worked on that you've uh, been validated with this feeling. One of the most amazing for me was uh, we went on a site visit, the Community Foundation and, and I both went on a site visit to Car Lake uh, Alternative Day School. Uh, all the kids in that program had been suspended or expelled from some school in their region. They were all there together. And throughout the day, um, they were usually in the math class or some other kind of class. Um, but uh, Linda Hevern created the program there in which she brought the arts to them and taught them different things throughout about a year's time. She went through the whole, the whole year. So when we visited, we asked the students, so what are you getting out of this? And some of the boys would say things like, oh, I get a break, you know, it's restful, uh, I just like it. They had all different things to say, but typically kind of a one word answer. All of a sudden there was a girl in the back and she said something that it just, it just I remember it so clearly. And she said, just because you make a mistake doesn't mean you throw it all away. And I looked again at each of those kids in that room and I realized that she understood 
that she was getting a second chance and that they all deserved a second chance. Then that is part of what the, what the art program gave to these kids, is a, not just a second chance to go back to their regular school, not just a second chance um, to, to do something positive, but to actually revisit their whole identity and how they could see themselves and what their real place could be in, in their community, in the world. Let's talk about um, big issues. For instance, uh, arts and climate change. A friend of mine once said, well, the arts are the answer. That sounds so good, and I know it's true, but you can't cure cancer. You know, you can't do things like that. I said, well, actually, <laughs> at what we can do, what we have found, is that through an arts and healing program, what we were getting people to do is comply more with their, with their recovery um, regimen, whatever that was. They were being more pleasant with their caregivers. They had a better attitude. So yeah, we, we, weren't, we weren't giving them the medication. We were giving them a reason to take the medication, a reason to live, to keep living while they were here. And similarly with the climate change, um, what we've been able to do is help people understand the dynamics help people understand what's changing, and to develop their own commitment to, to making the positive changes that we all have to make to save the planet. So now I can really say the arts are the answer to saving the planet. Um, this, we got started down that particular road when the aquarium came to us one day about three years ago and said, we know you're already working in, uh, with farm worker families, with the arts and uh, all kinds of things there. We need to, we have a grant from, from NOAA to help uh, farm worker families particularly understand their role in, in climate change, keeping the oceans healthy, even though they haven't been to the ocean, most of them, right? And so we said, no problem, we'll go there. We trained our teaching artists, and they, we went into schools, we went into community um, centers, and after a year's time, we taught the, the students what was there, what was there in the ocean, what was changing, especially for the older kids, and, and what had to happen next. In some cases we did um, murals, in some cases we did plays, in some cases we did um, uh, some, some portraits. They did all kinds of different types of artwork, but all exploring the same themes and exploring the same ideas. We then brought them all together. So th these are coming from different schools, different community centers, all together in four separate exhibitions at the aquarium. All the families came, and then we gave them a vehicle for completing another small mural on site that helped them uh, articulate what, what were they gonna do, individually or as a family, to, uh, to keep our oceans healthy. And they are all able to do that. We had 500 people each, um, at each exhibi exhibition site, and uh, it, it was just fantastic. So it really just showed us that that there again, the arts are the answer. Um, it's helping uh, scientists that are, are working in climate change um, are, are really um, stymied by the public's resistance to their messages. My name is Mark Baer, my guest Paulette Lynch. Uh, we will be right back after a moment and we'll continue this in part two, thank you. The Museum of Monterey at Stanton Center is for the community, by the community. Our mission is to tell the stories of Greater Monterey with an emphasis on history, arts, innovation, and our maritime heritage. Throughout the year, we bring you intriguing exhibitions and stimulating events. But to continue to be a center of excellence, we need your donations. Please become a member today. Simply go to our website, museumofmonterey.org, and push a button. And if you make a larger donation, I will come to your house and sing you a medley of your favorite love songs. And remember, the Museum of Monterey at Stan Center could be the perfect location for your rental event. Check it out, museumofmonterey.org. Hello, I'm Mark Baer. Welcome back to the second segment of Muse. Uh, continuing with my guest, Paulette Lynch, Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. What we're talking about is um, how the arts are the answer for even big problems. Uh, 
again, we were talking about uh, climate change on the last uh, uh, segment, and one of the things that I've learned here, and I've had, uh, again, because we've been putting scientists and artists together here at the museum, is that while scientists have data, it's very hard for, to change perceptions to make people take action uh, with, 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 uh, with just science. And the combination of science and the arts to put an image, to put a story, to put a, a face to a problem uh, is, is much more powerful. And, and I, I think that you've had that experience. And not just me personally, not just the Arts Council particularly, but what we're finding, I had the great fortune this year of going to Spitfire Communications training um, thanks to the Hewlett Foundation. Spitfire uh, is a communication specialist uh, company who helps nonprofits to get their story out. And, uh, and they really emphasize story. And um, because one of their concerns has been they're watching all the scientists with their graphs and their facts and their data points and, and submitting more and more to the public and saying, no, really, you should be concerned about this. Look at, look at my data. And, uh, and even though some uh, um, scientists are really articulate, they're still speaking a language that only their other scientists can, can really understand, especially to the point of feeling the urgency and especially to the point of making any actual changes in, in anything. Um, so so um, that was part of the training that, that I took, is that for any of us who are concerned about making a better world, we need to be able to tell a better story. Because the way that humans learn is through story. And the stories that we tell really matter, and how we tell them really matter. So this is part of the, the training that I, I just was undertaking. But it's also part of my experience as I look around and see how, because I've become, I've, I've, early on, and by 2004, 2005, I was totally convinced that the arts are the answer. But it's been more recently that I've been really looking at, and how does that work exactly? And a big part of it is that whatever the arts expression is, it's all telling a story. When the, so that brings us all the way back, that when the, when the artists are uh, embraced by the scientists or, or, or social scientists or whoever really um, and integrated into the process the artists can help shape the storytelling and also it's even the most powerful is when the people that you're trying to engage whether it's little kids or it's a bigger community or other professionals when you're trying to, to uh, tell a story, it's even better if you can involve people in the story itself. Get them to tell the story themselves, get them to write the story themselves and dramatize it themselves. Then you have them walking out the door telling your story to everyone because now they feel it. Humans have to feel something in order to make any kind of behavioral change. It's very difficult to make a change. But the changes don't happen here until they happen here. So for example, you see Bob Sadler's work here. He is working to change the conversation about um, people who are living without a proper home. And he, and he, is, uh, he has a, a gorgeous uh, exhibit of portraits that he has taken. So when people are part of that whole conversation, they start to see things differently. And now they're open to all the data. What do you mean that there's so many people who are in Monterey County with all the resources that we have? How can that be that we have so many people who day after day don't know where they're going to sleep that night? And, and now they're, they're more mobilized. They're more easily mobilized to actually make some difference. But if you just give them facts and figures, it just there's no place in the brain for that to stick. Um, so these kinds of things, when people are opened up emotionally, now they're going to be ready. Um, you know, we used to say the spoonful of sugar, you know, <laughs> helps, helps the medicine go down. I think that really part of it is when the emotions are opened up, when people are engaged emotionally, now all the information, all the data that you want to give them, 
has some place to go. I'm not a brain scientist, and I, I never will be, but I'm getting closer to understanding these dynamics. And I really believe that's how it is, and that's how the arts are the answer. Now, one of the things, uh, you know, just from what I know from being executive director at the museum, is that we have in Monterey County a very amazing creative community uh, on a high level. I don't feel what goes on here is, some of it's parochial, but, but much of it is, is, is global. And, uh, and I also, one of the hallmarks of this creative community I found is that there is a desire to work with the community, to be more than a, uh, you know, many artists still have a personal statement and, and, and work from a personal perspective, but so many artists that I've met here also work as community artists. Uh, Kara Corser, for example, doing, you know, uh, you know, just this last week that we've been. So what's you, what kind of what's your perspective on the arts community here and uh, some of the just kind of thrills that you've had with it? There's such a broad range and it goes all over the county. So north to south and in the, on the peninsula, just everywhere in the county, you find lots of people who are, are doing really, really significant work in so many different ways, as, as you mentioned. And so that, that breadth and depth is so thrilling to me, and I see it in so many ways. Warren Chang really stands out for me as one of those artists who um, can work internationally. He's, his uh, work is exhibited everywhere, and uh, more so all the time. People come from all over the world to let's, let's talk participate. About his work. So he does um, oil painting, and it's really exquisite detail. And a lot of his subjects are, um, he has a range, but um, for me, some of the, the greatest uh, work and the most impactful is when he is showing the farm workers at work and in different, in different ways. And he does beautiful portraits and just very compelling work, but the, the, that detail and his mastery of light is, is just extraordinary. So there's a number of people who are working in that way. They could live anywhere, but they choose to be in Monterey County, and we are so, so fortunate. And, um, and then you see people like Steve Agnini, who um, he wears every witch hat in, in this county, which is actually, that's fairly typical uh, in, in a way, that, that people who live here and choose to work here they often have to do several different things to, to make everything work. But I think in Steve's case, it's just he's, he's just so passionate. He just has so much energy. So not only is he our county assessor, but, and not only is he a promoter of several bands, he started this amazing program called Guitars Not Guns. And it's in response to the violence that he was seeing, and, and he, just wanted, he just wanted to be uh, part of that answer to, to giving kids a different way of thinking and doing. And, being in the world. So he uh, enlists other um, uh, people to teach the classes and the kids that are doing the best uh, or have the most commitment, they actually get to take their guitars home. So he's, he's embracing a number of professional musicians and at the Arts Council we do the same thing. We have a range of, of individual artists who have their own studios, have their own work, but they're, going, they're willing to go into the schools and teach, they're willing to go into community centers and do more. Jason Fan is such a great example of that same kind of thing where he's, he is literally performing all over the world. And uh, he got to perform not too long ago in one of my favorite places, Istanbul. When he is here, he'll go and he'll do one of those wonderful um, nests that he builds, the spirit nests, to a Chispa a low income housing neighborhood and, and work with the kids there to build one of those nests. And so, so I keep finding that um, our, our, we have so many artists, performers, you know, all the whole range. Fran, Fran uh, Spector at Spector Dance is yes. another one that, who, um, she could be anywhere in the world and embraced at any community. Um, New York, Japan, she could work anywhere. But she chooses to be here. She has a beautiful studio facility in Marina. And she's a wonderful choreographer and a great dancer. And she too has also used the arts of the answer. Um, she has extraordinary um, programs. She did one on ocean where she was literally incorporating um, the scientists at, at the Moss Landing, um, at, sorry, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, and probably the Moss Landing Marine Lab too. And then um, she also did another one 
um, that was focused on, on farm workers and getting people to understand uh, their interrelationship with, um, with agriculture in, in a lot of different ways that she calls common ground. So, so we, are, we are so fortunate, I feel so fortunate, but I, I really feel like our whole region is so fortunate that we have um, all of these artists. I want to just to give a shout out to Andrew Jackson working for, uh, for Yak. There you go. He's, who's a fabulous artist, Jose Ortiz, who yeah. I always mention, who's, who's um, just uh, a magical person. Yeah. Again, doing important things personally and in the community. Right. Well, Jose is one of the examples that I always think about when I think about the arts of the answer because he has this amazing way of bringing kids forward who have had very troubled or challenged uh, situations and he gets them to see um, all the good that they have inside and all the potential that they have. So when he's working on a special project for us or he's working on something else in the community, he brings all that forward. I really see, I, I really do believe that the arts are the answer and I can see it happening in so many different ways. So my passion lies in um, my commitment to our community to bring that forward in as many ways as possible um, to make sure that absolutely everybody in Monterey County has the benefit um, of, of the arts as we understand them. One of the things that I want to make sure we do is ask what can the community do for you? What are, what are your needs and what, uh, how do we, um, if someone wants to uh, be in touch with you, if someone has to, you know, in other words, how can, how can they help? How can we help? There's three different ways that people can help. One is just to go to as many things as you can, wherever you see them, and bring somebody. Um, bring neighbors, friends, children. Uh, another way, it, directly for the Arts Council, is uh, we have a great and growing body of volunteers, and there's every which thing to do, from administrative to teaching assistant to um, working in the community on special projects. And of course, donations are always welcome. And, um, and needed to expand and improve all of our projects. And again, the website? The website is artsformc.org. And then one of the other things, you know, just as a sign off here, uh, I want to thank you for being so supportive for the artists of Monterey County. They need your support. Thank you. Uh, I mean, that's reason enough. And I think uh, they are grateful and I, I say thank you for them, but they do need your support and you've been a champion of the arts. We're getting there. My guest, Paulette Lynch, Executive Director for the Art Council of Monterey County. I'm Mark Baer, this has been Muse. We'll see you next time.